Hey everyone, it's Lee, aka Regicidal, and I'm here with the fourth episode of Let's Play RuneScape. In the last episode, you learned about banking and trading. Today, you will be learning about how to level up the stats on the right-hand side of your skill tab, so log in and let's begin. Before we get started, there was a new update that all players can benefit from. It's called the Squeal of Fortune. So basically, there is this little goblin note when you log in, right here on the right-hand side of your screen, and you can click it once per day. So when you click it, it'll bring up this wheel and this goblin and all these prizes. So you can see the various prizes, curled horns, 10k coins, small lamp, arcane spirit shield, 50 GP coins, more coins, water rune, you see all these various items and you can see it, the rarity of them on here. So basically you have one spin per day and we have one available spin right now. And if you're a member you have two, but if you're a non-member you have one. So right now we only have one and we can't claim half of these items because they're members items. As you see right here, the curled horn says members item. So you can't claim the stuff if you're a non-member and you get a member's item, but it is cool that you have the chance to get it. So to stop this, the wheel, so to stop the wheel, all you do is click the button and we will stop on a random prize. So let's hope we get something good. We got a oak short bow. So we can claim the item or you can discard the item and then you can either subscribe for membership and obviously you have to pay for that and you can click done and then you're out of there. So that's your one daily spin. So that's a pretty cool update that you can get a nice little item from. So if you remember, you could spin twice and you have the chance of getting a Divine Spirit Shield, an Arcane Spirit Shield, really good items that are very good and helpful in the game. So that's a new update. So every day, don't forget to do your Squeal of Fortune spin. Right now we're at the Lumber's Castle. So if you're not here, home teleport and come over here. Now, before we start skilling, we're going to do the first right-hand side column for skills. That contains mining, smithing, fishing, cooking, fire making, and wood cutting. Farming and summoning are both member skills, so we cannot do those. But we're going to start off with these. So before we get into skilling, you're going to want to go to Bob's Axe Shop, which is just south of the castle. You're going to trade Bob, and you can claim a pickaxe and a bronze hatchet for free. So you're going to want to claim those, and you're going to want to click Add to Tool Belt. You right click and you hit Add to Tool Belt, and you'll get a task completion for that. So that's what you want to do. You want to add those to your tool belt so you don't have to waste inventory spaces for them. Also, after that, you're going to want to run north and head to the general store in Lumbridge. The general store is notified by a little pot symbol on your mini-map. So that's right next to Explorer Jack's house where we started out. Now all you have to do is trade the shopkeeper, and he'll also have some free things for you, which is a tinderbox and a hammer. So you're going to want to take those, and you're going to want to add those to your tool belt as well. So... You add those, and now on your tool belt, if you click the tool belt icon, which is under the equipment slot, you can see that we have four out of seven. We have a bronze pickaxe, a hammer, a bronze hatchet, and a tinderbox. So that will get us started on our adventures on our skilling. So that's what you want to do, and have those prepared in your tool belt for what we're about to begin. Now to start off in mining, you used to have to go to Varrock to mine the rocks over there, but now they added a mine in Lumbridge Swamp. So to go to mining, you pass the Lumbridge Castle, you go south. You go to Xenia, where you did the Blood Pack quest, and you head south through the gate. Right now you're in the swamp, so you'll be heading more south. You pass a dock, you pass the swamp, and you'll see a fishing spot over here, which is dignified by the fishing symbol over here, so we'll get into that later. And you'll see a mining symbol right here, which is similar to the one in your skill tab. And right here is the mining place, so we're going to go and mine some tin ore rocks. Basically all you do is click on the rocks that you want to mine. Now these rocks, copper and tin, are both level 1 mining to mine them. So we can mine them at level 1 mining, and that's what we are. So that's what we have to train on until we get to a better mining level. So right now I'm mining some copper ore. I got some tin from the last rock. And there you go. You got plus 18 XP for mining a copper and plus 18 for mining a tin as well. So that's how you level up mining. You basically just click the rock. You let your guy sit there, and he'll do all the work. And bam, now we're level 2 mining. And... Let's see what we can do. We can find Lapis Lazuli from Copper and Tin Deposit, which requires a Dwarven Army Axe, which we don't have. I will show you how to get that later. And then you can return to the skill guide and basically find out what you can do in mining. So you can mine Iron Ore at 15, you can mine Silver Ore at 20, you can mine Coal at 30, and it gets better and better as you go on. Runite Ore being the best at level 85. So right now we're level 2. We have a lot of work to do before we get there. But right now we can only train on Tin and Copper Ore before we get to Iron, which is the next thing we can mine. So basically to train mining you would just stay here until level 15 and then you would find some iron ore rocks and you would start training on those. Now you don't want to get rid of the ore that we've mined because that's what you need for smithing. So 
basically let's get a full inventory of uh, supplies right here from mining and then we'll go and show you how to do smithing so hold on one sec while I speed through this clip to get a full inventory of copper and tin so as you can see that's how we start off mining and as you see in my inventory I gained three rows of tin ore plus an extra two and three rows of copper ore plus an extra two so that way we have an even amount of tin and copper ore for smithing now what you want to do for smithing is you home teleport we can run north back up to the castle but it's easier to just home teleport back to the castle now that we're at the castle you just run outside and you run north instead of south run north all the way up to the smithing place which is found right here with a picture of an anvil and a picture of a furnace the picture of an anvil means that there's anvils present in the house and the picture of the furnace means there's a furnace in the house and with the copper and tin ore that we have we have to use the furnace so you click smelt furnace and there will be an option to smith bronze which bronze is made by one copper ore and one tin ore so those two make one bronze bar so we're gonna hit the bronze logo right there and you'll begin smithing so you click smelt bronze bar and the guy turns your copper and tin ore into bronze bars this will get you smithing XP to level your smithing stat but that's not all after you finish smelting all of the bronze bars I'll show you what you can do with them there we go we got two smithing off of the bronze bars we also got six mining off of the full inventory of copper and tin ore that we mined now when you finish smelting the bars you can either sell them bank them or use them on the anvil to make weapon and armor and when you make weapon and armor that's also another way to level up your smithing stat so we're gonna use the bronze bar on the anvil we have a hammer in our tool belt right here so that's why we prepared that for this and we're gonna make a bunch of daggers so let's make all daggers you right click and you hit make all if you only want to make one you just hit make one or make five whatever you want to make but we're gonna click make all just because we're trying to gain XP now you see we're getting XP and we're making the bronze daggers we're turning the bronze bar into a bronze dagger now you can use those to fight you can sell them you can bank them you can do whatever you want with them but right now we're just gaining smithing XP so we got six mining off of one full inventory of mining and we're gonna get three smithing with a full inventory of bronze bars so that was the result from mining and smithing that's how you mine and smith you would repeat the process until obviously you get higher levels and then when you get a higher level you can smith and mine better things to get better XP and gain levels faster so that is how you mine and smith alright now that we've learned mining and smithing we're gonna move on to fishing and cooking so before we get started we're gonna start at the Lumberge Castle and we're gonna run north we're gonna go to the fishing store that's right across from the general store that we were at before here's the training area and then here's the fishing shop with the rod and fish logo on your mini-map when you get to the shop you're gonna trade Hank and you're gonna trade Hank and get the free small fishing net and the free crayfish cage and you're gonna also add these to your tool belt like you did with the other things so that way you don't have to waste inventory spaces so now that we've added the crayfish cage and small fishing net we can get started fishing so the crayfish cage is actually used for level one fishers to catch crayfish the crayfish spot is located just east of the castle so we're gonna go to the lumber's castle and we're gonna go east right under the church there is a fishing spot actually multiple fishing spots and you just click cage fishing spot and you'll start fishing crayfish so your guy will start fishing he dips the cage into the water and catches raw crayfish as you see they're raw in my inventory that's why cooking is a stat because we'll cook them later when you cook them you obviously gain XP and then when you cook them you can also eat them to gain HP so that is how you stay alive during fights by eating food it's obviously gonna take a little while to get my full inventory of crayfish so we're going to speed this up a little bit and return shortly now that we've caught a full inventory of raw crayfish, I left two spots open so we can carry logs to cook them. So as you see, we gained three fishing from fishing a full inventory of crayfish. And right here shows us that we can't do anything new. Five is bait fishing and sardine bait fishing. But don't forget, whenever you level up, your icon will flash in your skill map. And you will click it, and it will bring up the skill advanced guide like I showed you in the second episode of Let's Play RuneScape. And as you can see, we can't do anything new for fishing because the next thing is at five. But... If you have a new skill and you want to check it out, don't forget to check out the skill advanced guide and see what you can do that's new. For mining, we got level 6, so when you go here and you go to tools, you can see that we can use a steel pickaxe now. So you might not be able to do something new with the skill, but you may be able to use new equipment. So don't forget to check out the skill advanced guide to see what you can do with your new skill. 
Now that we've got a full inventory of raw crayfish, we're going to run west to the castle, and we're going to find a tree to cut down. So this is actually wood cutting, fire making, and cooking all in one lesson. Now we can't cut down oaks, and we can't cut down willows over here, but we can cut down regular trees since we're level 1 wood cutting. Oak is at 15 wood cutting, and willow is at 30 wood cutting, so we have a long way to go before that, but as you see, I clicked chop down tree, and my character takes out his axe, and he starts swinging at the tree. Now it may take a little while to get the first log since we're only one wood cutting, but there we go, we've gotten the log. So now with the log, to fire make it, you know we have a tinderbox in the tool belt, we got that before. All you do is light logs, you right click and hit light logs. You can also carry the tinderbox in your inventory and use the tinderbox with the logs, which will also light the logs. But there we go, now we've lit a fire and that was our first fire, and that's how you train fire making and wood cutting. But to train cooking, you use the raw crayfish on the fire. And you click the button, raw crayfish, and your character will bend down and start cooking them. So now we're beginning to cook them. The crayfish will turn pink when you cook them successfully, and they will turn black or dark orange when you burn them. So that is how you distinguish between burnt and cooked. While cooking, you may burn food. Now, crayfish are available at one cooking, but you'll burn a lot of them since you just began learning how to cook crayfish. Now, when you reach level 30, you'll never burn them ever again. So, when you're 30 cooking, you won't ever burn them. But when you start off at lower levels, you'll burn a lot of them. So, as you get better in cooking, you can progressively get better at cooking the food, obviously. But that is how you train cooking. And there you go, we uh, achieved the 50 milestone. So, we got a total level of 50 with all our skills combined. So, that's pretty cool. Congratulations, Rookie Seidel. And there we go, we got four cooking. Yeah, five cooking. All right. And uh, we can cook herring, we can make chocolate milk, and we can do heim crab, potato, and daemon heim. So that is what we can do with our new cooking level. And we can go back to the mainland. And there you go. So we train fishing and cooking. Lastly for today, we will be training fire making and wood cutting. So we're at the castle again, and we're going to run north, back to where we were for the fishing shop. Basically north is where all the trees are located. You're going to pass some trees on this way, but we're going to cut the trees over here because there is a lot of them. So now that we're here in the back forest behind the castle, right across from the fish shop, you'll see a lot of trees over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start woodcutting them. To woodcut, you just right-click and chop down tree like you did for getting the logs for cooking. And it'll take a little while for the animation, but eventually you'll get a log in your inventory like that. And you'll just want to fill up your inventory with logs like you did for mining and fishing. So like I said, this is going to take a little while to fill up your inventory, so we'll speed through this. Something I wanted to point out is as you level up your stats, you will be able to obtain material from the stuff faster. So as you see, we, uh, we have six wood cutting now. So I'm cutting the trees much faster than I was before when I had one wood cutting. So that is something additionally good about skilling. When you level up, you can obtain materials from the stuff faster as you're a higher level. So if I was 99 wood cutting, I would be cutting these down within one swing of my axe instead of 10 like we are doing. So it's actually helpful to level up because then you can skill faster and get materials faster to sell or use for more skilling. Alright, now that we've finished woodcutting these trees, we've got a full inventory of logs, and we have reached seven woodcutting from doing that, so we can use a steel hatchet, a black hatchet, and wood knots from normal trees, which also requires the Dwarven Army Axe, which I said I would bring up later, so I'm going to bring it up now. To get the Dwarven Army Axe, you have to be a member, but it is a steel pickaxe combined with a steel hatchet, so it is a combination woodcut and mining tool, it's a pickaxe and a hatchet, and it is also a chisel, so you can cut gems with it, so it's a helpful tool, but that's, once again, if you're a member, and we're not a member, so that doesn't pertain to us. Now that we have a full inventory of logs, you're going to want to find an open area with a long pathway. So we're going to start right here. And all you have to do is right-click the logs and hit light, and you will start lighting the fire. Your character will bend down and begin lighting the logs. It may take a little while for the animation since we're only level 1, but as you level up, like I said, the skill will move on faster, and you will light logs faster than you did before. And just like all the other skills, it's going to take a little while to complete, so I'm going to speed through this again. So now we've finished our full inventory of logs, and we fire make the whole thing. So from all that, from one inventory, we got ten fire making. We can now use candle lanterns, pyre logs, and seeping elm branches in Daemonheim. And that concludes this episode of Let's Play RuneScape. In this episode, you learned the first set of skills, mining, smithing, fishing, cooking, fire making, and wood cutting. In the next episode, you'll learn the second set of skills, which is crafting, rune crafting, and all of the combat stats. I will teach Dungeoneering in a separate episode because it's a lot to explain, so that will be on next Wednesday's episode, but Saturday's episode will be on the combat stats, rune crafting, and crafting, so I'll see you guys Saturday. Later, everyone.